Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Okay. Sir, uh, a 65 year old female uh, came to ER with complaints of uh, left sided upper abdominal pain, uh, burning micturation, and constipation since 5 days. On initial 10 second assessment, airway was patent, patient was speaking in full sentences, uh, breathing wise, respiratory rate of 20 with a saturation of 90% room air, circulation wise, BP was 140-80 and heart rate of 159 per minute uh, at that time pain score was 5 by 10 mm. uh, disability wise uh, e4 v5 m6 gcs by uh, pupils bilaterally equally reactive and uh, exposure wise patient was a febrile grbs of 198 on uh, we took a uh, vbg cbc crp and ecg at this point uh, ecg showing sir uh, af with uh, heart rate of 160 uh, so, AF with fast ventricular rate. Uh, BBG wise, patient was having a pH of 7.41, PCO2 37, bicarb 21, lactate 1.9, potassium 4, sodium 131, creat 1. So, BBG wise, no abnormality detected, sir. Uh, CBC CRP showing total counts of 11,000, 11, uh, hemoglobin of 10.6, platelet of 221, and CRP of 221. Uh, so, uh, come, uh, at this time, patient was connected to cardiac monitor, sir. Uh, now, uh, coming to sample history, uh, patient came to ER with complaints of abdominal pain, uh, constipation, burning micturition since 5 days. There is no history of fever, obstipation, vomiting, any palpitation, chest pain, uh, synco or chest discomfort. She complains of generalized tiredness. Uh, she is not allergic to any known medications. Uh, Medication wise, uh, she is taking uh, Epixaban 2.5 mg uh, BD, uh, Mitolar uh, XR 50 mg BD, uh, Silnidipin, uh, on, she is on human mixtard and uh, Linagliptin and Erythropoietin she takes every 10 days. Uh, Erythropoietin. Erythropoietin. Uh, past medical history, she is a known case of myelodysplastic syndrome. CAD, paroxysmal AF with fast ventricular rate, hypertension, type 2 diabetes and CKD. Um, she consumed the last meal in the morning, 7 a.m. But creatinine is normal. Creatinine is normal. CKD. Uh, CKD. She was, but creatinine is normal. Like now normal. So, no in case of CKD. How, how it is possible? Yes. How is it possible when the creatinine is normal? How, how can you make a diagnosis of CKD? CKD means it's chronic and it is progressive. Or it is static. Once the creatinine is elevated in CKD, normally it never come back to normal. It has to be elevated. Difficult. Okay. Uh, so, sir, um, since uh, uh, she was um, having a heart rate of 160, uh, it was like 160, 170. That's why that we point. don't, we should not read the diagnosis what is written from outside. We have to make our own diagnosis. You can add their diagnosis as it is diagnosed case. But if you see the di previous diagnosis, then it will be completely, it can mislead you sometimes. So, sir, uh, since <coughs> she was having a uh, high heart, uh, heart rate was 160, initially we gave her P uh, PCM because she was having pain also. Hmm. So, considering that though she was a febrile, we started her on injection PCM. Then also uh, we uh, gave her uh, uh, metoprolol injection 2.5 mg IV stat. BP on arrival was 140 hmm. But with that, uh, heart rate did not get controlled. Uh, it was still around 150. We repeated one dose, sir. Uh, we gave a second dose of Mitola 2.5, but with that also, uh, it did not get controlled. The patient already was on Mitola. Morning dose also she had taken. So, sir, then uh, we uh, started the patient on Amiodarone, uh, sir. Amiodarone, initially we gave uh, 150 milligram over 15 minutes, uh, and then followed by 1 milligram per minute for 6 hours, okay. then 0.5 milligram per minute for 18 hours. Uh, that we started the patient on infusion, uh, and the same time uh, we had sent the routine labs, and uh, we had also called cardiology, uh, given a cardio consult. Uh, echo, they had done an echo. Echo showed dilated LA, concentric LVH, no obvious RWMA, fair LV grade 2 diastolic dysfunction. What are uh, investigations you want to ask in this patient? Yeah. This patient is having ECG shows atrial fibrillation, not con controlled rate. Yeah. What are the basic investigation, blood investigation you will ask in this patient? So, one is uh, we have to rule out uh, CBC CRP to look for any infection, infection which is causing. Okay. Then, sir, we have to look for TSH, uh, yes, hypothyroid, hypothyroid. Uh, can okay, Thi yeah. hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. Then, sir, we have to look for all electrolytes, if any electrolyte abnormalities. Which electrolyte? Especially, sir, magnesium, potassium. Okay, uh, magnesium and potassium. potassium. Uh, 
ൾച്ചർ <laughs> 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 Uh, urine culture showed uh, hey, what is your opinion about this urinary as uh, a bacteria was there with symptoms and bacteria the is there means urinary tract no, infection sir, you, urine there. you may get a report so, urine shows bacteria plus plus mm-hmm. is it uti no, it is no, not uti you may get a report urine shows uh, pustules plus plus or uh, 20 25 pustules mm-hmm. is it urinary tract infection with symptoms if symptoms are there then definitely you can you have to consider but pustules or uh, bacteria does not uh, tell that there is an infection it is a uh, like uh, either a patient should have irritation uh, like uh, bladder irritation while urinating pain so all these things has to be there or culture has to be positive okay for an elderly individual you can get lot of pustules uh, that is that is not actually pustules they are all wbcs okay and sometimes bacteria also can present okay that doesn't mean that patient is having urinary tract infection you have to prove it okay. we had sent for urine culture sir okay. uh, urine culture was showing uh, e coli sir okay uh, which what is, is the colony count content to part 5 sir content to the part more than 10 to the part 5 okay part okay five. Uh, and then sir uh, he was also um, multi drug it was raised into ceftriaxone hmm. uh, cefexime yes we yes we yes we are positive yes we are positive so what is the ideal antibiotic you select for this patient sir gram uh, broad spectrum uh, yes we are positive means what can you give ceftriaxone no sir no. No. cannot you cannot ah. give ceftriaxone at mm. all okay so you can go for vipressin as a backup or apenem whatever it is suppose the patient is already on ceftriaxone mm-hmm. and you are getting an espl mm-hmm. you have to see whether the patient is improving or not mm-hmm. the patient is improving just continue the drug mm-hmm. some of the patients may respond mm-hmm. okay whatever it is this is espl positive mm-hmm. e coli multi drug resistant your ideal antibiotic initial choice will be vipressin as a backup okay so we started on vipressin as a backup okay in the meanwhile sir heart rate was not getting controlled like uh, over 24 hour infusion also uh, she was still having 126 and okay. uh, 120 like in that should we give a dc cardioversion in this patient mm, sir uh, if patient is not responding to reclimiting uh, rhythm uh, control both then we have to eventually cardioversion the patient this patient yes. should be give or not yes sir yes. what is your opinion and then the stable this patient is fully stable mm-hmm. you don't think about that now mm-hmm. you can still continue amedron mm-hmm. infusion this patient is not having chest pain this mm-hmm. patient is not, not having, having altered fever mm-hmm. this patient is not having hypotension nothing is there mm-hmm. patient is fully stable there is no requirement of uh, dc cardioversion but if you are if you want to give suppose it's not not re- getting reversed and you anticipate a hypotension then with proper consent proper sedation, sedation you can try try this sir uh, so we uh, uh, monitor the patient sir for like uh, do you want days. to do an echo in this patient what is the need uh, eh? clot we are not looking for tachycardia at all we are only looking for la clot so that has to be done that has to be documented mm. and you have to give some drug to prevent that mm. this patient is already on uh, what is it drug epixaban so there is no issue in that hmm. okay sir uh, after, like with cardiology consultation they had also added tablet amiodarone for the patient okay. 200 mg bd uh, with that also uh, like mitolar cardio infusion of amiodarone tablet amiodarone also it was not getting control okay so sir uh, we uh, cardiology uh, uh, advice hmm. for cardio uh, version for the patient cardio version elective cardio version elective cardio version was advised for the patient okay so So that is uh, going to be done only today. Okay. So according to ACLS, how do you approach a tachycardia? This patient is having, patient is having tachycardia. Okay. You have to find out what is the reason for tachycardia. How do you approach a case of tachycardia? So tachycardia, we have to see whether it is a narrow QRS complex or a white QRS. First is what? Stable or unstable. Uh, that is the first thing. Stable or unstable. Yes. If unstable, it is entirely different. Mm-hmm. Whatever may be the mm-hmm. rhythm, you go to... one direction if stable only then you will think uh, all these things okay suppose the patient is fully stable like this what is the next step uh, um, first we have to start, uh, 
first uh, stable patient then you have to see narrow or white uh, so and then you see the ecg whether it is narrow or white or heart rate is more and narrow or white Wide. Right. Okay. If it is narrow, what is the next step? Uh, if uh, if it is narrow, whether uh, patient is regular or irregular. Regular yeah, means what? Regular means sir, uh, uh, sign uh, like it could be atrial uh, um, normal sinus tachycardia. It could be uh, SVT. Okay. It can be. Uh, it can be uh, na- mm-hmm. like. Uh, tachycardia, sinus, sinus tachycardia, tachycardia or SVT. SVT. Okay. Mm-hmm. Normally in SVT, can you get a P wave? Sometimes, sometimes very rarely you get, get normal P wave. Sometimes you can get inverted P wave. Sometimes P waves will be embedded in the QRS complex. Sometimes P wave can be after that. Okay, whatever it is, if the heart rate is more than 140, we are not able to visibly see any proper P wave, and it is regular, then it is SVT. Okay, what is the approach there? So, uh, uh, SVT if patient is stable initially we it's stable only we have come yeah. to stable side so so we have started with carotid massage sir we have to give carotid, carotid massage. massage before that what do you have to do brewy yeah. so auscultant and roll out a brewy then we give carotid, carotid massage. massage okay sir, uh, if both not, sides or one side one side, sir. One side. One side carotid okay. massage. and if not then we have to also we can try with vagal maneuvers we can ask him to blow into a syringe okay. and push the plunger uh, to the end okay uh, sometimes it can get valsalva well, maneuver well, okay then sir if not uh, subsiding then we uh, go ahead with adenosine sir. adenosine what is the dose you give 6 mg initial dose we start okay how do you give adenosine adenosine will give in uh, proximal uh, uh, vein sir uh, as proximal to the heart as possible then we will connect it to a three way mm-hmm. in one side we will uh, put adenosine on the other side 20 ml ns will be there okay. the moment we push adenosine uh, we have to tell patient beforehand that he might feel a light headedness okay. after pushing the dose so we will push at the same time uh, after completing we will flush ns from the side okay. and then lift the Okay. So that uh, because short, um, act, duration of action is very short, very short. 20 okay. seconds, so okay. it has to reach. The Before heart. that, you have to ask some questions to the patient. Whether he is asthmatic. Asthmatic or not. Uh-huh. After adenosine, what is the next step? Suppose the patient does not uh, revert back to normal rhythm, what is the next step? We can increase the dose to 12 mg. Okay, you can give increase the dose to, to 12 mg. mg. Okay, if you have a central line? Then 3 mg, half the dose. Half the then dose. Half the dose, dose is enough. MG. Okay. So, you give adenosine, nothing happens. Then what is the next step? Hmm? Next step, after adenosine? No, oh, what is the truck? Beta blocker. So, either beta blocker or calcium channel blocker. Rate hmm. limiting beta blockers or calcium channel. Hmm. Metaprolol can be given hmm. or DLTSM can be given, Virapamil can be given. After that? That Even if it is getting un- no. then amiodarone. Okay, some doctors start amiodarone as a first line drug because you know the cost of uh, the uh, adenosine. Adenosine is 300 million, 300 rupees, very costly drug. Instead, you can if some doctors directly give beta blocker metaprolol, they are not very costly. Okay, whereas some um, uh, adenosine is a very costly drug. So some doctors avoid this uh, drugs, but ACLS says you go adenosine, beta blocker, amiodarone. Okay. Suppose it is um, irregular narrow complex. Mm. So what is it? Irregular narrow complex. We will have. Uh, it can be. What are the types of rhythms there? Uh, so it can be uh, irregular. Can be uh, sir AF hmm. poly uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia. Uh, okay, uh, multifocal atrial tachycardia. What is a common condition? Uh, so COPD. COPD. Okay, COPD. Mm. Treatment is oxygen, oxygen and uh, uh, respiratory care. Mm. Okay. Mm. If it is safe, what is the treatment? So we have to either start with rate control, uh, okay. rate control or rhythm control in emergency. There, are adenosine and uh, the carotid Most massage is removed. Part. Rest oh. of the things you can do. You can give beta blocker. You can give calcium channel blocker. You can give uh, amiodarone. Okay. Now on the opposite side, if you have a uh, wide complex, then how do you classify? Sir, white complex tachycardia also so we will classify as regular or irregular. If it is regular, what are the conditions? If it is irregular, what are the conditions? Sir, regular will be ventricular tachycardia. Okay. And then sir, SVT with aberrancy can be What there. are the three SVT with aberrancy? Sir, SVT with RBBB, hmm. LBBB and WPW syndrome. Okay, so you can have a VT, you can have a SVT with RBB, you can have a SVT with LBB, you can have a SVT with WPW syndrome. What is the treatment for all these things? Wide complex tachycardia. What is the treatment? So if you know that patient is having a VT, then uh, treatment is different. If you know that SVT with uh, RBV, treatment is different. If you know that SVT with LBV, treatment is different. If you know that SVT with uh, uh, WPW syndrome uh, with the retrograde conduction, treatment is different. How it is different? 
If it is a SVT with RBVB and LBV, mm. what is the treatment? Same thing. MRT. See, if you know that SVT yeah. with RBBB yeah. or LBB, whatever you had given yeah. for yeah. that yeah. narrow yeah. complex, complex, you can give. complex you can give. Yeah. Same adenosine. thing you can give. Yeah. You can give adenosine, adenosine. you can give beta yeah. blocker, you can give calcium, yeah. blocker, everything. Yeah. But if you know that it is SVT yeah. with uh, uh, WPW WP syndrome, with a retrograde conduction, yeah. then if you give uh, rate controlling yeah. drugs, what will happen? So, uh, the re-entrant uh, the accessory pathway will be more excited that, that will be a, a activated more activated. than the regular pathway mm. you are blocking the regular mm. pathway sometimes patient can go to more no, tachy like no, more no, severe tachy no. whereas vt you cannot try all these things you have to control the rate with something else mm. so all these condition safely you can get start amidron that's why in some areas of acls or some guidelines say you start, just start amidron whatever may be the uh, rhythm mm. problem it can control mm. Now, whereas in on opposite side, you have wide complex, which is irregular. What are the differential diagnoses? Okay, so, there we have polymorphic VT will be there. You can have polymorphic VT. Okay. And sir, uh, in irregular SVT with MRT. Irregular? SVT with MRT. Irregular SVT. Polymorphic VT, VT. that is correct. Mm. Then, VF. VF. If with the pregnancy, sometimes you can, but ah, okay, that can get sometimes, okay. But the classical VF examples are VF, VF, VF will be small complex and uh, polymorphic VT. VT, okay. In polymorphic VT, which is the most prominent thing, what we should know? Polymorphic VT. Ah, so what? Different, uh, it will be uh, torsadis. Torsadis D point. Is, torsadis D point is what is the treatment? Magnesium sulfate. So, magnesium sulfate can be there. But if you don't know all these things, you are not able to diagnose any of these things, but patient is having tachycardia, the safest option will be amiodron. Okay. okay. Only thing is amiodron also can produce some amount of hypotension. So, we have to be very careful. If amiodron, sorry, if the uh, uh, tachycardia is producing hypotension, hypotension, then whatever drug you give, patient will improve. If the hypotension is already per, like there because of cardiac failure, then when you are giving this all these drugs, there there is a chance of deterioration. Okay, that's why according to ACLS, if there is a hypotension with any arrhythmia, then the treatment is cardioversion. Cardio okay, if it is SVT or uh, like um, atrial fibrillation, all these things, DC cardioversion is a treatment of choice. Okay, what else you want to add? Uh, so we have to calculate chadwa score for okay. the patient uh, okay. because uh, if all EF patients are, have increased tendency for stroke stroke uh, so uh, to whether to start or not on anticoagulants uh, we uh, calculate it by using the chadwa score okay uh, so uh, that scores uh, it stands for uh, c for uh, congestive heart failure high h for hypertension age more than 75 that contains two scores mm -hmm. then uh, d for diabetes S is for stroke that also contains previous history of stroke okay. or TIA that also contains two scores. V for vascular 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 problem, A for age more than 65 which contains one score and again S for female category. Okay. Okay. So if it is more than two, we need to start the discharge. What the is the score of this patient? Seven, seven. seven. So it is very high. Then, yeah, okay. on, uh, so this patient may require lifelong uh, anticoagulation, oral anticoagulation. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's a persisting AF, mm -hmm. not a uh, like mm -hmm. a temporary AF. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is lone atrial fibrillation? A atrial fibrillation does not have a cause. Okay. We cannot find the cause why the patient is having. Okay. What are the toxins which can produce AF? Toxins. Toxic materials. Mm -hmm. Toxin. In toxicology, what are the reasons for AF? What is holiday heart syndrome? Binge drinking of alcohol will cause. So alcohol is the most common cause. Then recreational drugs. What are the recreational drugs? Ephedrine, ephedrine, cocaine, cocaine, amphetamine. All those things can produce tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, ventricular dilatation. So cardiac uh, rhythm and uh, cardiac muscle problems are common in recreational drugs. So these patients also can come to you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.